giving the audience information. Hi right, guys, Q and A time. Uh, let me start off by um, answering the most asked question um, that I've gotten so far. Why did I start a YouTube channel? Well, um, it uh, this wasn't totally intentional. So I started my side company um, this last spring, uh, making things and selling them. And to drum up uh, some buzz locally, I thought I would make a video of some of the stuff I was doing. Well, that, I put it on YouTube, and then it uh, kind of gained a following from there, uh, more nationally and internationally, rather than just locally. Um, so while I didn't really have this as an idea to start off, um, I'm really glad I'm doing it now, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's really, really great having this community um, where I make something, I put it out there, and then I have so much response, so much um, positive feedback, great suggestions, ideas of ways to do things better, um, and it keeps me motivated, you know, to get down here and make something and put it out there for you guys to consume. So, I hope that answers that question. All right, so I have to answer this question. This is from Wilf, who's one of my very first subscribers and fans. Um, he's just always been really encouraging, uh, and I really appreciate you viewing and all your kind words, Wilf. So I'm going to answer your question, Wilf. Hi, William. Do you have any favorite short uh, YouTube or short filmmakers who have a distinctive style? So, yes. Um, obviously, one of the biggest right now is Casey Neistat. Uh, I think he's got almost 2 million subscribers, and he has a daily vlog and a great, great... Um, film style. So uh, I really like him. Um, the skate videos from the late 90s and early 2000s were a big influence on me. In my teenage years, I was a skateboarder, and that's actually how I got started filming, was I would film uh, me and my buddies doing tricks downstairs and rails and things, and um, making short skate videos. I wish I still had footage of that, but I don't. It all went by way of analog and moving from town to town and from house to house and it's just lost but um, <clears throat> if you've never seen it which I bet a lot of you haven't um, photosynthesis uh, from Alien Workshop I think it was put out in 2000 it was just really beautiful beautifully done and uh, the skateboarding culture and art culture have always kind of gone hand in hand um, so that was also a big influencer for me uh, I also worked in a video store when I was a teenager and so I had access to um, a huge independent film catalog uh, and er I'd have uh, early viewings of some of the critically acclaimed films that were coming out um, from the you know big filmmakers um, and another one uh, another filmmaker who has also influenced me a lot is Darren Aronofsky who um, you might know from uh, Requiem for a Dream um, He's a great filmmaker, too. He has a very distinctive style. I know they aren't short films, but he has done some short films and early on in his career. Joseph, what do you do for a living? I am a professional photographer. I specialize in weddings and portraits, and I do this on the side. Um, and this is more of uh, just supplementary income. Um, I don't need to do this. Um, my photography keeps me pretty busy, but this is really therapeutic for me. Um, so that's what I do for a living. Uh, Stone and Sons, in relation to your upcoming shop tour, are there things you want to change or do you have a vision of how your shop looks in a few years? Also, what are your intentions, goals with YouTube videos, full-time gig, hobby, etc.? Um, are there things that I want to change? Yeah, sure. Uh, I feel like your shop should always be evolving. As new tools come in um, and, you know, your style changes or you're still developing your style, I don't think you should ever get locked into there's only one right way to do things. So yeah, my shop's always going to evolve. I might move tools around. I might use other tools more than certain tools. Um, how do I see my shop in the years to come? Uh, so I've got dust collection plumbed up right now, um, the rough plumbing, but I don't actually have it hooked up to every tool. Right now I've only got it on the jointer, um, the planer, the table saw, and a floor sweep. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to get more uh, dust collection. I'd like to have better lumber storage. 
in scrap lumber storage. Uh, maybe some more tools coming in. Um, yeah, more storage, more cabinets, more everything. But uh, I don't have a clear vision of that. I think it's just going to be uh, as I need something, I'll build it and put it in place. Um, Full-time gig, hobby, etc. So right now, I love my job as a photographer. Uh, I'm self-employed. I have been for the last 10 years, and that's been really great. Um, you know, I don't see this channel kind of going huge like Casey Neistat, you know, with almost 2 million subscribers. I don't know. I think this might, you know, always be supplementary income unless it gets really, really big and I start, you know, making enough money to live the way I want to live. It would be nice to have a little more freedom on the weekends, um, especially now that my daughter Morgan is born. Um, and as she grows older, it'd be nice to, you know, have weekends free to spend with the family. Uh, Dwayne, great channel, William. Look forward to your future videos. Question, what piece of equipment in your workshop do you use the most? Who? Uh, so table saw, I think, is uh, the most used tool in the shop, in, in most shops at least. Um, but I use my bandsaw a lot, and then um, I have kind of a love-hate relationship with my jigsaw. So I always seem to be reaching for it because it's an easy tool to grab um, and take to the workpiece. But a jigsaw isn't the best. It's It leaves a lot of cleanup to do. It's not exactly a perfect cut. You know, the blade can wander out of square, and you're... Your cuts can end up, you know, kind of, as you're going around a radius, it can, the blade can start doing this, and then you have kind of a wonky edge, and you have to clean that up later. Um, so, table saw, I think, is the most used in the shop. Jigsaw is the surprised used a lot, if that makes sense. Uh, Reaper Woodworks, do you sell anything you make? If so, how are you managing that? Being a photographer, I'm curious uh, what you use to shoot your videos when you aren't using your phone. I'm looking to pick up a Canon T3i based on how good Jay Bates' videos look. And finally, what have you done to generate more subscribers? Okay, do I sell anything? Yes, I sell uh, most, well, I sell a lot of the pieces that I make. Um, I use Etsy uh, for small shippable things. And the bigger projects that you see me make, uh, a lot of them are commissioned by friends or family or word of mouth, somebody wants something kind of custom that you've seen somewhere and they haven't been able to find it so they contact me, hey Will, can you make this? And I say, yeah, and then I try to figure out if it's a big project uh, with expensive materials, I'll factor in that. If it's a big project with less expensive materials, uh, I will usually base it on an hourly rate, um, how long I think it's going to take me to make, and then I charge them accordingly. Um, you know, we have pretty much a set price going into everything before I even cut into the first piece of wood, you know, so everybody's on the same page. Being a photographer, I'm curious to know what you use to shoot your videos when you aren't using your phone. Um, yeah, actually I've got Jess's camera right here. I can show you exactly what I use. So. or fifty dollars um, does pretty good uh, except I wish I hadn't broken the plastic shoe mount so yeah that's what I shoot um, that lens is what I shoot most of my stuff on I've got a whole bag like I said I'm a pr professional photographer so I've got a whole bag full of lenses um, that I've collected over the years but um, I think there's a 24 to 105 f4 uh, that Canon makes that's a great lens it actually comes with I think the 70s um, and if you can find one of those uh, used, that would be a great investment. The Canon T3i, yeah, sure. Uh, that's a great camera to film with. Um, uh, kind of entry-level consumer cameras where I'm working on professional gear, but it's all about the story. So it's never about, I mean, I started 10 years ago um, shooting photos, and that was not video, but it was photos, um, with a 6-megapixel camera when I went digital. Um, 
and I was shooting great images on that, and it was about storytelling. So don't let the gear catch you up. Um, the camera body is really just something to record on. It really, the lens that you put on your camera is more important. So I would say invest less in a camera body and more in a lens. How many sheets and what size is your outfeed table? Um, my, let's see, I use three sheets of three quarter inch plywood for the outfeed table. The table itself is uh, 49 and a half inches wide and 97 and a half inches long. Um, so it's just over four by eight. Um, and I love it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world. Oh, and one sheet of quarter inch uh, hardboard or masonite um, tempered hardboard, I think it's called for the top. And this is removable. This is, um, I made it so I wouldn't feel bad if I roughed it up and got it all nasty because hardboard's really cheap. I can just unscrew this, drop a new piece in, screw it down. How do you choose your projects? What motivates you to make and build the things that you do? That question is actually from my wife. Um, how do I choose my projects? Well, it's a combination of things. So, uh, if it's commission, it's, um, obviously kind of dictated by what the client wants and then uh, I usually film a lot of those commissions because why not right I'm making it and it might be interesting to you guys uh, things we need around the house um, I choose those projects on necessity uh, if I'm doing it I might as well film it um, things I want to make something I've had in my head for a while or if I have a really pretty piece of wood that I want to do something with or pieces of wood um, that's how I choose those uh, I like to mix in some more advanced or, uh, you know, not entry level projects as well as like the pallet clock. Um, the pallet clock was an entry level project, didn't use a whole lot of tools, it was an accessible materials, uh, and people seem to really like that. So I try to mix it up, um, with, uh, projects that are really cool and unique and then projects that a lot of people could do easily with limited tools as well as whatever I want right in the middle. Awesome wood things. Uh, let's see. Knowing what you know now, what YouTube related advice, video production topics, gathering, retaining an audience, monetization, YouTube, etc. would you tell yourself? Assuming it's possible to go back in time to the day you first posted something on YouTube. Ah, that's really, that's tough. Um, okay, so time travel. I go back to the spring. Uh, this was the first video I posted this this uh, assembly table, and it was because I wanted to film it just to show my friends and family, you know, kind of my shop because a lot of people are asking about it. So I thought I'd film it. Uh, if I could tell myself then what I know now, it would probably be to do a voiceover to do some narrative. Uh, only because that's my style video. Um, I've, you know, reached out to a lot of you all um, with questions to, you know, kind of gauge where everybody's at and what they would want to see more out of videos to try to develop my style for you guys. Um, and a lot of people have said, yeah, we like the narrative, we like to know what's going on, we like to know exactly what you're doing. So I didn't do a narrative on, on this project, but I wish I had. Um, as far as everything else, you know, it's really all about developing your style. So, like, Jay Bates has his own very distinctive style, and it works for him. His style wouldn't work for me because I'm not Jay Bates, and it would look like I'm copying him. Uh, so, I've, I would say just put everything you have into every video and learn from the feedback you're getting from your viewers. Um, gaining an audience, I'm a firm believer in... Make the work as best you can and your audience will find you. I don't depend on this income to make a living. My photography business keeps me busy enough. So I've got time for people to find me and I think that they will. So I'm not a big guy right now. I've got almost 1,700 subscribers. In the grand scheme of things, that's like itty bitty. Um, you know, I'm looking at, it would be ideal if I had 100,000 subscribers. Uh, but, you know, that probably isn't going to happen, but it might. So I'm just taking it one day at a time, as should you. Uh, the Smoky Ginger asks, what made you want to start a woodworking channel? I think I already answered that. Um, also, are there certain projects that you enjoy making over others? Yes, yes. Um, 
So I love the projects that go seamlessly and go really smooth and take as long as I think they're going to take. Uh, the projects that are more problematic, um, you know, that take some more problem solving or fixing or take me a lot longer than I think they should, uh, those projects aren't as fun to me. Uh, I also like doing unique projects or, uh, you know, one-offs of things. I don't like doing big production runs of things. Yeah, they make money. I can sell them on Etsy, but I don't like making the same thing 20 times. All right, Howard Springsteen. What size is my shop? Uh, well, my shop is in my basement. Um, it's a 2,000 square foot footprint, uh, but I only use maybe a third or a half of that, so I'm kind of stuck in this corner. Um, only because I don't want to kind of sprawl. I'd like to keep everything kind of right here. Um, and then over on that side of the basement is a future um, bedroom, bathroom um, suite, you know, as we grow older and need more bedrooms if we need more bedrooms. Uh, and then there's kind of the mechanical room and storage. Um, I've got kind of, you know, wood storage over there. Uh, so. Yeah, I'd say what you're seeing here is the majority of my shop, maybe 700 square feet. The lighting in my shop, what is the lighting in your shop like? Um, the lighting in my shop is, uh, you know, still a process, uh, but I got these LED four foot shop lights, I got them at Sam's Club, um, and I put one in over the table saw and I loved it, they're like really bright and I love them. Um, so every time I go back to Sam's Club or, you know, the big box store or whatever, I pick up one more um, and I put it in my shop because they're pretty awesome. Do I use any kind of noise balancing, canceling in your shop to help the audio? Uh, no. So uh, it's an unfinished basement and I've actually got bats of insulation in the, between the floor joists above me, which really help with the sound. Um, you can see, you know, it's bare cinder block walls down here. Uh, no, I don't do anything else for sound. Alright guys, that's it for Q&A this time. If you like watching this uh, kind of video, let me know in the comments because I might start doing a regular Q&A session. Um, if I get enough co questions in the comments, um, I might kind of, you know, keep them all in a pile and then answer them all on camera. Keep them all in a pile and answer them all on camera. Yeah, if you're new to the channel, please um, give me a thumbs up. If you liked it, go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more from me. Until next time, guys, I'll catch you later. Thanks.